Hi. Hi, this is Abe from cinemadailyus.com. I'm thrilled to be speaking with Jessica Barden about her new film, Holler. How are you today, Jessica? I'm great, how are you? Good, good. It's really nice to be able to speak with you. I don't know if you remember, we actually spoke a few months ago uh, about Pink Skies Ahead. Yeah, I think I do remember. I've done a lot lately. I, at first, I thought you were going to say we already spoke about this movie because <laughs> I've had to do press for this movie for like five years. So I, it was like, wow, like you came back for more. No, I think I do remember you. Yeah. Well, it's really nice to be able to speak to you again. This is a very different role. Um, I don't know what order you shot things in, but what? how would you sort of compare the two? I actually shot the second series of The End of the World in between this. Okay. So I did Holler and then I shot that and then I did Pink Skies Ahead. Um, they obviously are completely different, but that's just what I was doing that year. Like I did three things in a row that, and actually I did this after I did a play. I did a Harold Pinter play in the West End and then I, went to Ohio and made a movie about a girl from Ohio. I, that's what, I'm I'm so lucky, you know, that's the way that I want my career to be. No, that's great. And so as you mentioned, the story is, this takes place in Ohio and it's a very uh, specific story, I think about the American workforce, but I'm curious what uh, universal aspects of it spoke to you. I think that, you know, I wanted to make a movie about somebody that, that the battle when you figure out, when you come from, the middle of nowhere when you come from a place where you're realizing that you can't do everything that you want to do here and how challenging and lonely and how kind of angry you are at yourself that you don't want the same things as other people and how brave those people have to be and in our story you see Ruth doing this at 17 which is very young and the sacrifices that she has to make the conversations that she has and, you know, the way that you have to put yourself out there in the world and be shot down. Um, I really felt like that was incredibly important to, to show. And in the distance since reading the movie, making it, and then the pandemic, the movie just appears to become more and more relevant. It's crazy. Absolutely. And was there anything you really struggled to uh, relate to or connect to about this character? Thankfully, no, not even the American thing, because I, you know, you can be the same as somebody from anywhere. And I believe in that. Um, so thankfully, no. Um, and I, that's probably also because I had a very good director as well. And she wrote a good script that really explained everything. Everybody in this movie came from different places and no one struggled with it. Nicole created a really immersive experience for us. So anything you know, obviously I'd never worked in a scrapyard before and neither had Gus who plays Blaze, but, you know, Nicole really put us through our paces in the rehearsal process and we learned all about it. It was very real what we were doing. Yeah, and you also get to work with Pamela Adlon, who I know you worked with previously. You, you uh, guest starred as a version of yourself on uh, Better Things. And uh, do you, what was it like working with her in a non-comedic context? Well, I hadn't done better things. So I filmed this. That's how long ago we made this movie. Right. I filmed this and she only worked for a day, but I was just was obsessed with her. So I basically texted her and was like, hi, please, can I be in your show? And she said, yeah. And I'm so proud of her in this movie, you know, because also she's my friend. And obviously you do see Pam in mainly comedic roles. And that's the biggest skill that an actor can have. But I'm so proud that she got to be seen in this movie doing a very, you know, stripped back performance. And she's usually playing these very inspiring people because she herself is very inspiring. But obviously it was a big leap of faith for her to play something, you know, she's like the worst mum in the world. And in bad things, she's like the best mum in the world. So I'm glad that people got to see a different side of her and see her do it so well. Yeah, and you've also done a lot of comedy or dark comedy with uh, Tamara Drew, The Lobster, The New Romantic, The End of the World, and then sort of some more uh, dramatic skewing things like Pink Skies Ahead and Jungle Land. Do you have a preference for one over the other? No, I'll just like, you know, do anything if I think that it's right. I don't have a preference really. Um, they're both so hard. I don't buy into this whole thing where, you know, like one, 
comedy still doesn't get the same respect as straight dramas do, which is crazy because comedy is so hard. Um, I feel so lucky that people give me the opportunities to like trade on both of them. I don't think I'm funny. I think that I just have a lot of things to say and people will be like, oh my God, why are you saying that? And you know, then people just laugh at it. <laughs> Is there anything that you haven't tried yet that you're looking forward to trying at some point in the future? <sighs> what do I want to, oh my God, I want to make a movie about horses. I watched Sea Biscuit the other day and I was like, yo, this is a great film. Like, I want to make a movie because I actually used to ride when I was younger. And I I love doing sports. Like, I would love to do an action movie. Like, I've always done sports my whole life. And like, I'm not really, you know, I'm not afraid of things. So I would love to marry those two things together and kind of feels like I want to make a horse movie. I don't know if anybody wants to make a horse movie with me, but I would love it. I find them so exhilarating. Seabiscuit is one of the greatest movies of all time. I don't care what anyone says. Do you have any projects lined up? Yeah, I'm shooting something in Australia right now for Netflix, a show called Pieces of Her with Tony Collette. And... I have something next year. I have a lot of things that I can't talk about, but you know, hopefully we'll see each other again and we'll be able to talk about them. Of course, have you seen Tony Collette's horse movie, Dream Horse? I know, I really wanna see it. Do you know what? She was filming that when we filmed the second series of The End of the World in Wales. We shared unit drivers with that production. I'm not joking. They, we had the same unit drivers and they filmed at the exact same time. Obviously this was in 2019 and I had no idea that I was like ever actually gonna like work with Tony Collette. Um, I wanna go home and watch it so much. Yes, I really wanna watch that movie. I think you'll like it. Um, wow, and, uh, I, I've loved Tony's movie as well at the same time. She's, they should cut me a check. <laughs> That's true. Well, everybody watching should make sure to watch Holler uh, when it premieres in theaters and on demand and digital on Friday, June 11th. Thank you so much for speaking with me, Jessica, and let's talk uh, about your next project next time. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you. We'll speak soon. Bye.